Here's one I've been practicing. Boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots. I can do this all day. Cats and boots and 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 cats. Here comes a Halloween beat. Tricks and treats and 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 tricks and treats. Woohoo! Two, three, and a wiki, 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 wiki. Tricks and treats and 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 tricks and treats. I found this on the web. This is the story of how Anansi the spider got his long, spindly legs. One day, he walked into town, and smelled all the food his animal friends were cooking. He asked his friend Rabbit for some of his famous stewed greens. They're almost ready Anansi, said Rabbit, want to help me cook them. But helping wasn't part of Anansi's plan. I'd love to, Anansi said. But I have to do, um, other things. Tell you what, I'll tie my web to the pod, and, when it's ready, just give it a tug. By other things, Anansi meant asking for monkeys' beans, zebras' carrots, meerkats' garlic bread, badgers' honey cakes, hedgehogs' zucchini fries, aardvarks' ant casserole, and impalas' no-bake keto bars. Before long, Anansi was tied to eight cookpots, and feeling very pleased with himself. It's not like all eight will be ready at the same. And that's when Anansi felt tugging at all eight legs. Ouch. Soon, a very hungry Anansi stumbled home on his suddenly very long and spindly spider legs. Realizing that if you stretch the truth, sometimes it stretches you back. The end. This is the story of how Anansi the spider got his long, spindly leg. Okay. Once there were two mice who became friends at Mouse College. One was from the city the other from the country, when they graduated, they promised they would stay friends and visit each other. Soon Country Mouse visited the city, but right away, he got chased by a cat, and nearly run over by a taxi. He couldn't even eat lunch as the pigeons grabbed all the lovely rotten food on the ground. He decided to turn back. I can't visit you, how can you live there? Country Mouse wrote in a somewhat regrettably snippy email, but City Mouse understood. I'll come visit you instead, he offered. Soon, City Mouse visited the country, but right away, he got chased by a hawk, and nearly run over by a tractor. He couldn't even eat lunch as the crows grabbed all the seeds on the ground. He decided to turn back. I can't visit you either. How can you live there? City Mouse wrote, clearly a bit resentful of the earlier email, but eventually they had an idea. They met in the middle and took turns showing each other around. Soon, Country Mouse knew which way to look when crossing the street, and where to get the best pizza crusts. City Mouse learned when the tractors would be out, and how to stash nuts and seeds for later. And once they got to know how each other lived, they became even better friends than they were before. The End Okay, let's hear the bear's side of the Goldilocks story, and you get to choose the ending. One morning, Mama, Papa, and Baby Bear came home from a walk to find that Baby Bear's breakfast was gone. Someone's been eating my porridge, cried Baby. But you don't even like porridge, said Papa. It's the principle of a thing, said Baby, who was very clever for her age. Then, Baby Bear saw that her favorite chair was smashed to bits. Someone's been sitting in my chair, now I'm far too upset to do my homework, she said. Mama was just about to roll her eyes, when they heard snoring from their bedroom. They crept in to find a little blonde girl sleeping on Baby's bed, dribbling a tiny droplet of drool on the pillow. Humans are so gross, said Baby, and this time her parents agreed. Okay, time to decide. Do you think the bear should scare her away, invite her to stay, or get her parents to pick her up? Papa called out, stay here with us little girl. Goldilocks responded just like you'd expect, by screaming and hiding under the covers. What? What did I do? Papa asked. Baby just shook her head and walked up to Goldilocks. 
Baby bear, nice to meet you. Goldilocks said the little girl as she reached out from under the blanket for a paw shake. Eventually, Goldilocks calmed down enough to leave her blanket fort and introduce herself properly. The bears discovered that Goldilocks was really a very nice little girl. And after she convinced baby bear that porridge is pretty good with cinnamon and raisins, mama and papa decided that the two girls should have play dates every Tuesday and do their homework together. The end. Okay, let's hear the bear's side of the Goldilocks. You ate our breakfast and we're hungry. Where are your parents? said Papa. Goldilocks woke up and understandably got a little confused about what Papa meant. Don't eat my parents, she screamed as she hid under the blanket. Papa realized he'd goofed up big time. Sorry, we just want to call your parents to come pick you up. Goldilocks was only a tiny bit less terrified. When Goldilocks's parents arrived, the bears graciously invited them to come into the house. Oh, I've imposed on you enough. Let's leave these nice bears alone, said Goldilocks as she practically dragged her parents to the car. Maybe you can all come over for dinner sometime, suggested Mama. Before Goldilocks's parents could answer, Goldilocks blurted out, No, I mean, I have a better idea. A few days later the bears came outside to find a great big muffin basket, from one of those fancy mail-order catalogs, the note read, Sorry about your breakfast, hope you never get hungry, ever again. The end. Okay, let's. The bear family got set up in their scariest bear poses, then counted down, three, two, one. Then they all yelled, wake up. The little girl woke with a yelp, then cowered under baby bear's blanket. What do we do now? whispered Papa, who was frozen in his best I'm going to eat you pose. I didn't think this far ahead, said Mama, who was trying to speak clearly through her snarled teeth. Oh you too, muttered baby bear. She then walked right up to the bed. So, about the whole breaking into our house thing, baby bear began. Goldilocks knew where this was going. Time for me to run away, isn't it? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, said Mama Bear, as she and Papa dropped the scary act. Goldilocks got out of the bed, gave them a little, I'm sorry wave, and ran home to her parents. The end. Depending on the city or town, fire trucks can be red, white, yellow, or lime green. Want to see for yourself? Ask me to search the web for pictures of colorful fire trucks. Why did the dolphin cross the bay? To get to the other tide. What do you call paddling in a dried out riverbed? Extreme rafting. What rock group has four guys who can't sing or play instruments? Mount Rushmore. Where should you work if you want to tell people their fortunes? The bank? What kind of sugar does Lady Gaga put in her coffee? Raw 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 raw. Did you hear about the restaurant that only caters to dolphins? It only has one customer, but at least it serves a porpoise. Why did the clock get kicked out of the library? It talked too much. My friend Robert was going on and on about how great it is to cook food on a stick. So I just said, K hey, Bob? Want to hear something that will make you smile? Your facial muscles. Why wouldn't the oyster give up her pearl? She was shellfish. Please excuse my friend who jumps into mosh pits. He tends to get carried away. How does a bird break into a bird feeder? With a crowbar. Just yesterday, someone asked me to stop playing Wonderwall. I said maybe. What's a zombie's favorite kind of weather? Brainstorm? Where do boats go when they feel sick? To the dock. What did the orange name its biography? Pulp. Nonfiction. What sport needs a life jacket, paddle, and ball of yarn? Whitewater crafting. What does Godzilla eat for dinner? The restaurant. What do Alexander the Great, Winnie the Pooh, and Chance the Rapper have in common? Same middle name. What do you get when you cross a vampire and snowman? Frostbite? Want to hear a roof joke? It's on the house. What did the science book say to the math book? Wow, you've got problems. Did you see that guy wearing camouflage? Me neither. What do cowboys pay for marsupials? A buckaroo. I bought a textbook about human anatomy the other day. Someone had removed the appendix.
I don't trust the beach. Too many flip-flops. I've got a pen that can write underwater. It can write other words too. What do you get when you cross a cow? And an octopus? A reprimand from the Scientific Ethics and Integrity Committee. And an immediate withdrawal of your grant funding. A woman got a pet parrot. But she was horrified to discover that all it did was say mean things and insult her. Nothing she did could stop it. She was especially worried, because her whole family was coming over for Thanksgiving. But when Thanksgiving dinner finally came, the parrot didn't say a word the entire time. After the meal, the parrot turned to its owner and said, Please forgive my behavior from before. I was entirely out of line. Wow, the woman said. Glad to hear it, if I may ask, said the parrot. What on earth did that turkey say to you? This is a Fibonacci joke. It's worse than the last two jokes you heard, combined. I have a joke about Einstein's space theory that I've wanted to tell. And I'd say it's about time. What do you get when you cross an elephant and a kangaroo? Earthquakes in Australia? A group of artists couldn't decide which one should go first, so they drew straws. I'd tell a chemistry joke, but I'm not sure what reaction I'll get. One day, I forgot how to throw a boomerang. Then it came back to me. I once tried to organize a hide and seek tournament, but it was a complete failure. Good players are hard to find. What's another name for Santa's elves? Subordinate clauses? Did you hear about the man who lost the right side of his bottom? Apparently, it was just left behind. Have you heard the joke about yoga? Never mind. It's a bit of a stretch. This guy told me he was Harry Potter's godfather. I thought he was joking, but he said he was serious. Where do they make average things? The satisfactory. How do you fix a broken tuba? Tuba glue. People often accuse me of being a plagiarist. Their words, not mine. What did the bee say to the daffodil? Hey bud, when do you open?